I am slightly obsessed with granular synthesis, so every time a new plugin comes out, I need to check it out. Sugar Bites Grain Dead has been out for a few days, FT11 played with it, so let's do this first look together. Okay, here we are. First of all, beautiful interface, I really like the way it's laid out. There is also this UI scale factor, which you can use to resize the plugin. Uh, I really appreciate this in plugin, so it's a very welcome addition. Uh, the very first thing I want to try this with is with Aria Libra, which is a free instrument by my company Sonora Cinematic. If you own a full version of Contact 6, you can try it out. I'm going to link it in the description below. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, this with grain dead at 0%, so 100% dry. Let's start playing with it. What is rather unique about grain dead is that it actually uses transients to trigger uh, the uh, buffer. Uh, so you'll find that this window here displays incoming audio, and you see that it's detecting little flags. So red flags are where the grain has been recorded, and the white one is the playback. The cool thing is that the transient detector is multiband actually. So if you stay on auto, it automatically selects the loudest band. But you can also use specific bands to trigger the signal. And you have sensitivity knob over here to tweak the results. Which is quite cool. You can select the buffer size. The envelope of the grain playback. Let's try a few. And if you don't want to use transients, you can actually use clock. To trigger the buffer. Which is quite fun. Let's mix it in with the dry signal. Without touching any other parameter, already got something quite interesting. Let's bring it back to 100% wet so we can understand what's going on. So here you have some classical parameters that if you're familiar with ground synthesis, you'll be familiar with. So you have grain size. The playback speed. get some really glitchy interesting things position of the playback some jitter and if you want to pitch shift the grains again let's bring it back with the dry signal for a minute Let's bring in some of the effects, some reverb, delay, let's play with density, so I'm guessing this is controlling the density of the playback of the grains. Dry signal back in. Let's bring the pitch down. Mm -hmm. 
Let's explore the filter. Bring the resonance up. This is a bandpass filter, so let's bring it to low pass. This is a uh, notch uh, band reject kind of filter. Filter sounds really good. Let's try with the high pass. Bring the modulation down. Little less reverb. Let's tweak the color of feedback of the reverb. Let's increase the density of the playback. It's quite fun, and we didn't even touch the modulation, which we're going to do next. And by the way, this is me not even reading the manual. This is literally, I installed this five minutes ago. So it's quite intuitive, and you can get some really interesting results quite fast. Let's dig deeper into the modulations. Using modulation is where things start getting fun, obviously. The way you activate the modulation is by clicking on the human over here. You can increase the amount of modulation or invert it and select different sources. Let's use the envelope to trigger the grain size. And let's randomize the speed using random. These are fairly basic modulation sources if you want, but my favorite stuff happens when you start using the trigger sequencer and the mod sequencer. Let's start digging into those. To show this, I just looped a basic region with just a C3 uh, note and we have uh, four bars of it. And the way the trigger sequencer works is that you can use it in two different ways. So you can use it to basically control the dry wet knob. So for example, I can just deselect some of the steps, press play. If I bring my wet dry knob all the way up, you can get these really interesting effects. You'll see that it's modulating it. Double dub the clock speed. 
but you can also use it to actually emit grains so rather than in the dry then controlling the dry wet crossfade you're actually using it to emit the grains so to play back the grains to increase the size which is very cool and you don't need to do it in clock but you can also use it to trigger the different markers Which is very fun, I must say. One of my favorite things uh, so far. It's very creative. And let's demonstrate the mod sequencer with the filter, which you haven't really explored properly. So let's bring the modulation intensity for the filter to the maximum. And then a source less like sequencer. And let's start playing with this thing. Let's actually bring the mix to the maximum. Let's select a low pass with a lot of resonance so we can actually work out what's happening in the, over there let's click on the random button and here let's click on clock bring the rate up quite cool let's bring the cutoff right down Really cool. Let's try with the band pass. Band reject. <laughs> Fun. This this sounds really cool. And the high pass. Let's bring the resonance down a little bit and the mix down as well. Let's go back to low pass. And then you have this assign knob as well, which you can use to either control the grain panning or, uh, well, the filter panning, but I'm guessing that it's at the last stage, so you're effectively also controlling uh, the grain panning and then the resonance and the mix. Let's use it with the panning and let's increase the modulation to the top and let's create a modulation, bringing the intensity up. See, it's now using random, so it's actually bringing all the way to the right. Let's go to 100% right, 100% wet, rather. How about we use the mod sequencer for this as well? So now if I bring everything to the left, And invert it to get some really cool rhythmic effects. Fun! But now, if you really want to be impressed, let's check out the Harvester. The Harvester works very much like a bunch of macros that you can uh, morph between. So you have these controller over here, and the closer you get to a specific parameter, the higher that parameter will be. And you can control the different parameters over here. And you can insert breakpoints. So say that I want to go from here to here. I'm just going to be pretty random about this. And let's go farther away and let's go absolutely crazy. Oh, it looks like 12 is the, is the maximum. And then you can uh, click on autopilot and it is going to start traveling in between all these points. So let's press play. Really cool. And now you have this mod mix, which basically is going to crossfade between the main modulation sources and the harvester. This is super impressive. This is really creative. I love this.
This is truly fun. This is really just the tip of the iceberg of what Grain Dad can do. Let's just uh, play with some more sources. Overall, I really enjoy playing with Grandad. Congratulations to the Sugar Bites team. And um, by the way, I bought my own plugin. I wasn't sponsored in any way by them. It sounded to me very much like a fresh take on a granular synthesis, uh, considering that the market is quite saturated with manufacturers that tend to make two granular tools that are more geared towards making pads and beautiful textural sounds. This one instead is quite glitchy and percussive, which can be a lot of fun. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed Grain Dad and if you played with it uh, more than I did, I literally just installed it this morning. Uh, do let me know if there are features that you really love and that should explore uh, more. I'm really looking forward to digging deeper into this. If you want, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I put a new video out. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.